Here we have a uh, question. Uh, do, uh, do I see any value in Arthur Wesley Dow's book on composition? And uh, I don't know how many of you all have seen that book. It's, it's eminently worth your time to look at it. Um, when you're reviewing it, you recognize in his analysis the, um, what appear to be the very fundamental elements of, of the, uh, what we call decorative design. And uh, on some level, they apply to representational painting. So why wouldn't I want to understand what he's talking about? Uh, yeah, Arthur Dow was at Columbia, I think. And I actually even recommend another book by a Columbia professor who's trying to provide a uh, 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 figure, I think maybe you call it figure construction, but a figure method for creating figures out of your head. This guy's name was Elan Biment, I think. And both of these uh, are very useful books for, for people on at certain levels and a certain um, uh, arena. But, um, but to be specific about Arthur Dow, um, the, um, the uh, fundamental thing that he does that is, you know, if, you, if, you're, if the person talking about composition doesn't break this out, you'd have to argue he doesn't, he's not at first base, but at, <laughs> he talks about line versus mass versus color. I'm sorry, versus values versus color. That interesting discussion, his idea of notan, which is the idea rather of chiaroscuro, except that it means more than just the nature of the stuff of the visual world, but it's actually the play of, you know, it's a it, it's the beautiful relations of those things as well as I understand it, and 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 that's a that's a that's a point well taken uh, from Dow. Uh, it doesn't <clears throat> uh, it doesn't prevent you from making you know proper use of the observed visual world, which is what what Da Vinci was fundamentally doing. Uh, but um, yeah, but but the idea of uh, of, of of line though he it's, he breaks it down to line and uh, and 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 notan or the the black and white the spotting question of you know question of dark spots light spots and the play of those things and uh, and uh, color and what he, he although he says it. His sense of the spatial uh, somehow doesn't is not included in line. I have to say though that what you really what he does is he says it's all it's it's an all-encompassing thing. It applies you know everything applies to everything else and all that sort of thing. So you can't quite escape from it. But I rather prefer the idea of form or everything spatial rather than line itself. You can see how the old model would have been line. The old model you know the Angian world or uh, where the um, we're talking about a two-dimensional phenomena, the world an analyzes a two-dimensional thing, and then line becomes, of course, everything is just two-dimensional. So line just you know does, lives in that place. But uh, you know, if you think of it differently, you know, you might find that line might occupy itself with even things like intensity, like, like or the size of colors going to other colors and that sort of thing. Even though those are thought of as rhythms, once you get three-dimensional in this. When the, when the world presents three-dimensionally, it may, it may uh, sort of shake up such a simplified uh, notion of, the, uh, of, of line as that element. So I, like, I prefer to consider it this everything spatial, that element, everything spatial, and that certainly includes you know, patterning, all the two-dimensional shape making and, and, and all the routine of what things do left and right in a picture, and what they do as, as um, you know, as bump counts, as I like to call it, but are silhouettes or those sorts of things. So, but no, those are, I, I mean, almost every idea he has is, um, is something of value to you and you would do well, just like in the Munzel, Munzel system, you do well to understand what he's talking about. Uh, I think his dark side is, is his under, his downplaying of the idea of studying nature firsthand. And uh, he says it should be done, of course, but he basically says you should, art comes from art. And that was a big battle going on in those days. Does art, in fact, proceed from art or does art proceed from nature? And uh, I think that's one that is going to go on. Uh, I've, it's no question that there's what you're finding in different painters is that they draw forth the poetry. 
And what the worst thing that can happen, though, is that somebody else draws forth the same poetry and lives in that world, and then somebody else gets up here, and before you know it, your roots get shallower and shallower. And I do think that's the great warning of the Antius story. So uh, that's one point at which I disagree with uh, Arthur Dow. But, uh, and I think maybe the final thing that probably I find disturbing, and I don't find him disturbing in general, I find him refreshing and, and insightful and, <clears throat> and, 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 and wise in, in, uh, in that operation of making patternistic beauty. But uh, in his own work, and I went and looked online, and I'll show you a couple or three examples, I guess. Uh, in his own work, he's disappointing. In other words, I don't, I see what he does in the patternistic world, and I see that he gets it and that he does good work and he encourages people to do good work. But when I see him trying to draw forth from nature, I'm, I'm rather frequently disappointed. I prefer, uh, you know, a half a dozen other people over him, or more than that probably, but of his own time, uh, who, who seem to apply a great deal of his own information far better than he does. So that's one of those tricky little places. So if you ask what the use of an Arthur Wesley Dow is, you'd have to say, if, to me, I mean, or to a student of painting who's trying to paint the, the world as, as it appears before him, uh, that begins to be kind of a critical uh, a point, you know? So how do you apply these things, you know? Or in fact, uh, is, there a, some, some, is there an application of the type that he implies when he virtually says you need to take nature and just immediately turn it into your form, you know, and then rather abuse it, I guess you'd say. No, I, I, my approach to it is that there is an intuitive element to this thing. So when you're seeing something before you and you see that it has beauty, and it's, it's still your job to draw forth that beauty. And in the course of drawing it forth, you'll naturally recognize rhythms. So the very things he's talking about, you'll recognize them. And you, will, and you will improve on them if they need improvement, you know, or you make sure you get it all. That's even more of a destructive thing if you see beauty and you know, can't bring it. But, um, but that part where you simply have all of his knowledge and all those sorts of things, then find yourself before nature allowing some parts of it to play and some parts of it to, to exist for you, uh, I think is where you're in a better position. Uh, it, to me, it's rather a lot like anatomy, oddly, is a matter of, uh, of realism that doesn't particularly have anything to do with beauty. It's just sort of factual nature, much like anatomy is just factual stuff and so on. But um, anyway, but fundamentally, though, the, uh, the pleasure in painting to me and as an impressionist, whereas at least somebody, I say impressionist, and I really do mean somebody who sits there before nature and seeks out and by the way, I might very well be setting something up beforehand, so it's not just a question of seeking out. But even when you're setting up like a still life or an interior, your job is actually to, to, to find out, you know, to, to, to get your head around what's going on. So what is that, you know? But if it doesn't involve the distribution of spots, you know, the notan, if it doesn't involve the timing and the size and the spacing of things like color and all those sorts of things that this guy Dow refers to, then you wouldn't be in a very good uh, you wouldn't be in a very good position to actually evolve from the picture from there. Uh, as I said, though, that you, you your job is actually to sit there before nature and see where the music lies. Watch, watch, watch. And I found that I find more music by the long meditation before nature. Uh, you know, look four times for every time you draw. Wait, 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 wait until you see what you see. And of course, it's much more what it's doing than what it is in that sort of world. Uh, the realist world is what it is, you know, that's where it would be anatomy or something like that. Uh, or even be a figure, a human or whatever. Uh, there are levels at which I, I find that uh, Tao appears to be happier, sort of, as we say, in that world, you know, the world of the, of the object, because it does, and the delineated object and so on. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm not saying he's, he's locked in there, but you, you'll have to look at this for yourself and with your own thoughts in mind. Um, but I, again, I'm fundamentally trying to get you to accept that um, I'm talking about something from a very, some very specific point of view, and that is um, uh, the visual, the impression, the visual, the impression to the, to the eye and where beauty lies as we sit before nature. You know, there are people who will sit before something, a landscape or whatever, and they will, they will choose a view that has absolutely nothing good going on for it, right? 
I mean, you, you wonder what they were thinking. You know, it may not, it, it, for example, in this, one of the questions that Dow brings up is the question of domination, subordination. It may not have a dominant point, or a point of, a point of a center of interest, you know. And you're not going to get a good picture out of that, you know, if you don't know how to place the thing well, so that there's some some the equilibrium, you know, and there's some and the distribution of those spots is 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 sort of magical. If you can't grasp that in your mind, you're not going to make anything better out of that either. So there's no there's there's the realism part, the performance of the exacting, you know, uh, rightness of a color relation or any of those things, is not going to get you to this special place. He's Dow would be right in saying that art actually is something else. But it is it is incumbent on us to evolve our own art from nature itself, to put our time in before nature. And uh, as I said to one of the, a friend who was talking about um, color theory, I said, you know, it's way better to learn color theory by collecting things that belong in the same color sphere and beginning to wonder why, beginning to try to see what what is that? Why is this more beautiful than that? That's color theory on the basis of beauty, you know, not color theory on the basis of this does this, that does that in some abstract world, but it's on the basis of what is, what is the source of beauty. So if you start playing with colors to colors and you get two different, two colors that really sing and that search for the third one, let's say it's a red and a yellow, that search for the third one, the green or the blue or whatever it is, that search for that color, you're going to, by the time you've done this a handful of times, you're going to be starting to have seriously evolved your own color theory. And so, well, I don't want to make the art impersonal. I mean, I, I mean, wholly personal. You know, beauty is not is not subjective. On the other hand, the pursuit of it, that say through your own eyes and through your own experience and through through your own uh, honest search for the truly beautiful, you know, uh, there's a value in that that we bring to each one of us separately by our own proper researches and honest researches brings to the whole body of stuff. And there's and yet there's no working from that body of knowledge in my view, and 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 Dow really implies that there is, but that, to my view there's no real th great value in working from somebody's body of knowledge and trying to glue that on to nature, or to somehow use pieces of nature to perform that stuff you learned in a book somewhere. Uh, so and I think that probably is the is the breaking point between he and I. You know, he actually believes, and that's where I think art schools are dedicated to, and Columbia being no exception. They're dedicated to this whole world of stuff men have done, you know, so it's like a scholarly effort. But the arts are way bigger than that. And your connection to nature is is so big and it's so imperative that you're not going to, in my view, bring anything original to the game at all. It's just, you know, just variations on how many angels can dance on the head of a pin if you're not careful. So I, I'm, 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 I differ from, from Dow in that way. But these are just sort of random thoughts. And uh, if you want to be more specific about something about Dow, I don't consider Dow unuseful. I think he's I think he's a delight. And I do recommend reading him as much as anything I've seen on composition. So, uh, and with that happy note, you know, I think I'll have, have to exit. Um, we'll see you next time. Comment, subscribe, and uh, share, and all those things. Much appreciated. Till then.